Hello and welcome to a windswept Clifton Park as we continue our series on local cricket and teams in the York and District Senior Cricket League. And today's profile is on a real Premier Division powerhouse, one of the most consistent performers in recent years in the local cricket scene. And that is, of course, Clifton Alliance Cricket Club. So I'm joined by Jeff Maidman, the Honorary President of Clifton Alliance Cricket Club. Now, thanks very much, first of all, for letting us come down and seeing your lads in action. It's a club with a very proud tradition, founded in 1867, so it's been around a hell of a long time. A long time. Could you tell us, very briefly, how we've got to the stage where we're down here playing at Clifton Park? Uh, in my day, well, um, as I say, I, um, I worked at the hospital uh, for 42 years, and uh, the boss once called me into his office, he says, uh, Mr. Maidman, do you still play cricket for the Alliance? On York Naismith, I says, yes. He says, have you ever thought of moving? I says, well, not really, no, we've no money or anything like that. Like, he says, well, how would you like to come up and play on our ground? He says, because I'm under a lot of pressure to sell the ground to York Cricket Club, who just moved up from Clarence Street. He says, they want the land. And I says, well, I says, can ask my colleagues and committee members down at the cricket club. And I went back to the Alliance and there's my ear and mentioned it. And this was, oh, it'd be lovely. And I came back and I says to the boss, yes, we would love to. He says, right. He says, I'll give you £100 a season, free teas, etc. And I said, that's wonderful. And we did. We had six strips, which was very good for having two teams. Uh, and, and every year I started to build another one. Well, uh, it took uh, two years to build a proper strip. And before you knew where I, are, I had 13. And that is there today, we can't go any further, and we're on two or three junior sides, we're on three senior sides, and we enter every cup competition there is, and we have gone from success to success. We are, uh, at the present moment today, we uh, are second in the Premier Division of York District. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, no one can be failed to be impressed by your beautiful pavilion, it does look very impressive. I understand you received a bit of lottery funding to, to help did, you out. Yes, I can't remember the year. I think it was 96, maybe. Uh, and uh, uh, we had a wooden building. Uh, uh, there's some photographs in the pavilion today. And I used to paint that every winter. I used to whitewash the front and everything. And the day we got the grant and all the plans was passed to what we were going to have. And I came down that day and I stood and cried. The bulldozed it all down. <laughs> And I'd looked after it for donkey's years, but look what we've got today. Fantastic. Now I I'm said very proud of it. Clifton Alliance is one of those great stalwarts of the Premier Division. I think you joined the league in the mid-70s. Yes, we did. How do you keep your consistency? You're always near the top of the league, and you always perform. How do you manage it? Because we, uh, we always um, uh, we have an overseas player, uh, which, you know, nearly every club has them now in the Premier Division. Uh, I don't know if I agree with it entirely, but yes, we have. And uh, we uh, always get good players who want to join us because of who we are and our facilities. Always. So, you know, that's, uh, that's where we are today, second in the league. You mentioned overseas players and obviously you're second in the league and as you look up, you'll see Easingwold at the top and they don't have any overseas players. No, they don't. So, do you think it's really that beneficial to have them? I, I personally have said... Uh, I don't know if I agree with it. Well, I'll tell you the truth, I don't agree with it. And the reason I don't agree with it, we, uh, we have to raise money, and it's not easy raising money. Uh, and we run junior sides, and I think, well, why do we pay someone from overseas to come and play cricket for us when we run junior sides? Stupid. So uh, that's the reason, and plus, as I say, we, people who would like to go and join a better club because they are a better player, we welcome them and they come and that's why we've got them today I mean players who we've known I've known for years who've played for the clubs and they've approached me and they've said uh, would I be welcome if I'd like to join your club I said yes of course you would you know I wouldn't guarantee you the first team players oh no I wouldn't say that but he knew and I knew that he would be a first team player and they used to say that because we were on three teams you know but yes that's how we uh, how we uh, recruit really recruit is uh, what we've got our facilities and uh, and our records. So Bill Rodham, you're the secretary of Clifton Alliance. Yeah. What's your assessment of the season so far for the team? We've had a good season so far. Um, first team had a bit of a poor start, but come very strong over the last eight games. So standing second in the league. I think the second team are also second. 
third team or top of their league. So, yeah, it's going pretty well so far. I've spoken to quite a few teams, obviously, doing this series, and Cliff and the Lions seems to have, um, I wouldn't say you were unpopular, but you have a reputation of being very competitive. Do you think that's fair? Uh, I think it probably is fair. It's something that uh, I think we've been aware of and probably to an extent this year have constantly tried to turn down a little bit. Obviously, we want to be a competitive side, we want to be a successful side, but we also don't want to be to be an unpopular side. And in, in fact, that reflects on not only the players, it's a lot of other people at the club who do a lot of work. And I think it, it's, it's we're more unfair on them than, than anyone to be, you know, to be thought of in, in that way. This season, looking at the league table, I've done a bit of research and you've, only, you've played 10, you've won three and below you is Dunnington on a similar points, they've won two and drawn seven. So it's a bit of a strange game when you can win two or three games and be second, third in the league. Yeah, I, this league is very dependent on the toss, like, you know, as, as in today, we've batted first, got 250. Um, to win this game, we have to bowl out here with, whereas if we, you know, we uh, bat second, knock off a score we we win the game so you know a lot a lot goes on the the winning losing draw which personally i think it should be a win lose it's a 50 over game but that's the rules in the league and in in fairness i think that the best team the best team wins the league without without exception looking at the table are you surprised to see yourselves above dunnington but below easingwold um i i'm slightly surprised I mean, I think everyone's a bit surprised at Dunnington, you know, at the start of the season, I think nearly everyone would have said it's Dunnington and then who do you think would come second? I think everyone knows that Easing World have a good side. Uh, in fairness, without any overseas player, they've, they've done extremely well this season. Uh, Dunnington, on paper, don't look as strong as they have, although they've still got some formidable players who, on their day, can win them a game on any... On any given on any given day, but uh, as I say, it does look a bit more of a, an even league this year, and I think that's a good thing for the league that you know there's four or five teams there who maybe still harbour hopes of winning it, which has to be better than one team dominating the whole league before the season's even started. Finally, thinking of the future of Clifton Alliance, you're second in the league. Let's say if you won the league, have you achieved everything? Because I mean, are you going to go into the Yorkshire League, or are you going to consistently win the league in this division? What, I mean, what is there on your agenda for the future? Well, I would imagine, and uh, I am sure I've heard it talked about amongst my colleagues in the club, that it, what would we do if we was in the Yorkshire League and we said, "Ooh, I'd love to be sat out here uh, on the day it happens." You know, a lot of them would. On the day you play York. Yeah, play, oh, the well, yes, we play York now, but uh, in the in the Premier Division, but uh, they're no problem to us, York. We beat them any time. I'm sure we can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's been lovely to be here, Jeff, and it's been nice to speak to you. Thanks very yeah, much. Thank you very much, lads. Thank you very much indeed.